So 343 just released a blog talking about the two new pieces of equipment, the Quantum Translocator and the Threat Seeker, and how the Threat Sensor had some significant buffs and nerfs to it. And the Legacy Zoom Toggle coming back into Halo. So all you sniping fans, you're gonna wanna know this. If you wanna know more about Halo, especially about the season four update that's coming right around the corner, well make sure you tap subscribe to this channel. Let's get right into those details. So 343 first goes into the Quantum Translocator. They state that this is designed to have as much impact as Overshield or Active Camo. So likely we'll see the Quantum Translocator replace either the Overshield or Active Camo. The functionality of the Quantum Translocator is the first button press activates the Quantum Translocator and creates a slip space thread at that location. The second use of the QT, if you want to call it that, will teleport the player back to the original threaded location. However, upon teleporting, a new thread is created at the location and the thread they just teleported to. So the original location will disappear. Each subsequent use will teleport the player and update the destination slip space thread until the quantum translocator time has expired. So it's a limited time type of thing like active camo, like overshield, and you can keep reusing the teleportation ability as long as it's still active on your character, which now begs the question, is there a cooldown? Yes, there is a cooldown between the uses. So you can't just constantly be spamming around, teleporting around like you're lagging, like with 300 ping or something. Now we have the threat seeker and it's different from the threat sensor in that it only sends out one pulse and it requires the opponent to be within line of sight, meaning you will not reveal enemies around corners or through walls. The equipment's projectile can bounce in order to reward accuracy by allowing for unique and clever shots. And the amount of time that you are revealed is the same duration as a player's shield recharge time. So you only have a few seconds. Now the threat seeker is very similar to the threat sensor, but it has different types of mechanics with it. So to differentiate the two pieces of equipment from each other, they decided to change the threat sensor significantly for season four. Effectively, what 343 did is that they increased its duration and sensing radius. The time each target is revealed was decreased to give more focus on sensing threats within the radius of the sensor while active. Now we had some minor tweaks with the ping frequency, the sensor radius, but the biggest change you'll notice when using it is the sensor duration going from 6.5 seconds to 15 seconds. Though the reveal duration has gone down from 2.5 seconds to 0.75 seconds. So effectively, you just get a quick little flash of an outline of a player rather than what we have right now, which is a significant spotting of that player through walls and things like that. Now, my favorite thing that they're changing with season four, what they mentioned within this blog, is the legacy zoom toggle. It just basically just makes it all multi-zoomed optic weapons function like they did in traditional Halo. Because the way it is in Halo Infinite right now is annoying as hell. It's the sole reason why I don't bother playing Team Snipers. If you're not catching what I'm saying, well, let me show you what I'm talking about. So with the sniper rifle, you see right here, zoom in once, it's five times zoom. You zoom in again, it's 10 times zoom. You zoom once more, takes you out of the zoom, like you've always seen within Halo. The thing that they did with Halo Infinite though, is say this, right? You go one time, five times zoom, go into 10 times zoom, so you get de-scoped, or you switch your weapon like this and you switch back and you want to zoom back in to say five times zoom. No, you go into 10 times zoom and then you have to go cycle through that again to get back into five times zoom, which is generally the effective range for the sniper rifle. Most of the time you don't want to want to bother with the 10 times zoom. So what the legacy zoom feature will do, will make you zoom in five times, zoom in 10 times and say you get de-scoped. Well then you get zoom back in, you get put back into five times zoom rather than right back into 10 times zoom where you were. I literally just would not play Team Snipers because of just going back into 10 times zoom. It was so annoying, incredibly frustrating and completely disorienting and a really odd change they make after just like 20 plus years of that same functionality. It was working so well for the Halo franchise to just change it for Halo Infinite. Didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. So let's get into the thoughts and opinions section of the video right here. So the quantum translocator it sounds like a very cool item we've seen gameplay of it through leaks back and i believe in october of 2022 and what they've showcased on it it's a really cool unique bit of equipment to come into the halo franchise i'm definitely excited to try it out and see what kind of cool things people can play around with 
you can definitely have some fun with custom games with this as well. This is going to be a really cool addition. Though, is it going to be as impactful as, say, an overshield or a camo? I just couldn't really possibly see that happening within at least four free 4v4 games within say like big team battle possibly it also kind of just depends on how long that time duration is when you do pick up the quantum translocator what is that cooldown between uses really going to be we'll definitely have to dissect that once it does come out and i definitely will make a video about the quantum translocator the threat seeker here i am really questionable about okay because it seems like one of those things where like they, we heard this over and over again right before the release of halo infinite that 343 really wanted to focus on the lack of redundancy within the sandbox and to me the threat seeker seems very redundant to the threat sensor but the threat sensor seems to be able you can stick it onto a wall and it will showcase where people are within the radius where the threat seeker seems to be able to have the ability to bounce around corners and then effectively have the same kind of functionality of revealing player locations without having to actually see them. I wonder if there was ability to possibly even merge these two together, have like an alternate fire mode for the threat sensor, right? Maybe like a cool little update for the equipment where you can choose to either have it stick on walls or bounce around corners. Kind of like how we have with the heat wave, right? You can choose horizontal or vertical firing. Obviously that's two completely different types of sandbox mechanics right there, but I think the idea you can make happen. And I'm glad we're getting some new equipment within the game. Anything cool and new to play around with is definitely useful. It just seems like the threat seeker is very redundant to the threat sensor. I'll definitely have to do a deep dive into the threat seeker to really see the differences between that and the threat sensor to understand why they decided to have this be brought back and why it's not redundant to the threat sensor. 343 also stated that they do have a full list of patch notes coming for season four that they'll be putting up soon before the release. And of course, I'll cover that on the channel here as well to keep you guys all informed with all the good Halo news that's going on right now. We recently got some really good information about infection coming in with day one of season four if you guys want to know more about that and the changes that they're looking to make within the infection well check out this video right here thank you much for watching catch you on the next one peace out